Okay, there's a lot of talk about continuity and what it is and how it affects the model. And I've made videos about it and I know other people have made videos about it and tutorials and instructionals and ad nauseum. And I'm here to hopefully clear some of that up. Now, as far as continuity goes, there's a lot to consider when we're talking about class A surface quality. Now here, I have an R, a hard edge between these two surfaces. This is what's called a G0 continuity. I know it's G0 because I have a section in here and you can see I have the porcupine set up. This is a hard corner. If I measure, there's an angle between these two lines of the porcupine, which tells me that this is in fact G0. They touch at the bottom and they have a gap at the top. Now, I can use an edge fillet, I can use a shape fillet, I can, whatever I need to to put in a smooth transition. There's other tools that I can use. I can uh, simply use uh, match edge that'll allow me to control how one surface flows into the another surface. So this is, again, simply G0. Mathematically, those edges touch. The next level of continuity is G1. As you can see here, if I zoom way up on that porcupine, you'll notice that the end porcupine on this and the end porcupine on that across this boundary are parallel. Being as that they are parallel, that means they are, at a minimum, tangent. Now, the thing is, they are also G0. I know that because the, the end porcupine and this end porcupine touch one another at this point they come together they actually touch and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit where you may have a, a continuity of sorts that doesn't necessarily reflect all the others so this is a G1 continuity so this is just simply you're looking at the model it looks pretty okay this may be acceptable for an interior part with a grain but something on the exterior uh, chances are this is a big no-no. When, when you get into fillets that are less than a mil in size, in some case, cases they say two mils is fine, you may be able to get away with just a simple uh, tangent fillet. You know, if we're talking about the bottom of a like a step tread and they have a, a, a fancy pattern and you, you have a tiny little radius at the bottom of that, no one's going to see that. So that may be an acceptable condition. The next couple of options that I'm going to show are G2. These are curvature continuous. They are G2 because if we look, not only do the endpoints touch across the center point, I have a condition in which the, the teeth are parallel. You can see the parallel in this. And then this comb comes across and touches. Okay. Now as I look at this, this G2 continuity across the top, this G2 continuity across the top, the, the edges come down, they are truly G2. I have a nice curvature going across, but it's not G3. I don't have acceleration from one surface into the other. The curvature just comes in, touches, and it comes right back out again. Okay. In this case, it's a, a slightly different scenario. It does basically the same thing. Uh, it comes in, touches, and it comes right back out again. So this G2 continuity may be acceptable, is acceptable for interior components, something with a light grain, but if we're talking exterior body panels, this is in no way acceptable. You don't want to see this type of condition on an exterior body panel. Now, G3 is what we're talking, shiny exterior body panels, big, large transitions. You want them to look like this. So across my center line, you'll notice that the rate of curvature is identical as it goes all the way across. So I know for a fact that this here is a pretty surface. This is a G3 continuity because across the center line, it comes in and comes out and it's the, the teeth are exactly the same length. The acceleration is exactly the same from one side to the other side. So this is a pretty surface. This is a definite G3 surface. Now this is where philosophically and theoretically I could have something that looks like this. You'll notice there's a giant gap. 
this is technically from this surface to this surface, this is G3. If I look at this, this comb and this comb are exactly identical to one another. If I were to line this up and put this up at the top, it'd be absolutely perfect. It Actually, the way I made this, these surfaces is I just took this surface, moved it forward, split it, and lowered the one. So in theory, these are curvature continuous, tangent continuous, um, the rate of acceleration continuous, but I am no longer G0. I have broken my continuity at G0. And this is why it's so important to, in a lot of ways, measure the surface in different ways, analyze the surface in different ways. Mathematically, across these boundaries, from here to here, even though there's a big gap, they are G3. But visually, there's a giant gap. Now, I exaggerated this gap. But there are instances where I may actually have a slight little gap break. And when I do my analysis, if I come in here and do like a surface continuity check, that slight little gap break may show me a G0 uh, break, but it says a perfect G3 condition. This is obviously too big for that to, to fall within those, those limits. But uh, there are times that that is possible. So that's why it's very important to do a visual to understand what you're looking at when you are doing these types of visuals. Now, if I come in here, let me go ahead and, I'm just gonna hide all these, blank them. I'm gonna go to uh, just show no edges. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna look at these with a reflection. all of them. We'll go and now if I look at this with a reflection you can see I obviously have a gap between them but these are perfectly smooth going across those boundaries. Okay so if I were to measure again mathematically boom beautiful but there is a giant gap. It's G1, it's G2, and G3. Now here's the thing if I were to take this surface and rotate it about an axis down here and just simply rotate it, I would um, in fact break the tangency at that point, but I would still hold G2 and G3. The vector for the tangency would be different now. Um, this, but mathematically the slope still has to be the same. It, there's, a, there's a, again, there's a big philosophical thing going on here. I don't want to fill your brain with too much uh, philosophy, but it's, it's just one of those things where um, you have to sort of make sure what, what you're looking at is good. Now in this case, we know those surfaces are good. Mathematically, they're utterly perfect, except for they don't touch. Now this surface over here is best case real world scenario. This is G3, it's perfectly smooth, goes across, it's absolutely beautiful. Now when I get into this next surface across the top, what I want you to notice is, here, let me rotate this way. As I look at this, let me increase my count. If I look at the shape coming across these boundaries, okay, let me go like this. You can see that there is a, a difference in shape. As I come across this boundary, you see it goes whoop and comes back in again. Okay, or it goes out. Whereas this one just, this one comes in, goes back out again. Whereas this one here, comes in and back around again. This is telling me that this is, yeah, it's G2. It's perfectly smooth across that center face, but the curvature changes quickly after that center line. If I look at this one, ah, look at that. Those porks, if I zoomed way up, you would have seen a tiny little break. You may have seen it already, but you can see here, even with those porks, if you're not careful, you may not pick up on something like this, okay? I know someone's gonna say something in the comments, did it on purpose, but here with this reflection analysis, you can see I definitely have a break. You can see that, okay, they looked G2. If I look at it from this top view, it looks really smooth, but as soon as I turn it, as soon as I break it, you can see here the differences in all of those. This is, I know, is G2. 
you can see how this surface transitions. This surface transitions differently as it gets to the other end, but this surface is almost perfect. It's pretty basically perfect across that boundary. So these are the kinds of things you're looking for. So when I look at this from like this this type of perspective, it looks okay. If I zoom in on it, that sort of washes out. But that's why it's very important to look at all your data in different manners. If I look at this, this is obvious. It's just simple tangency. It flows across, comes in, breaks the angle, not the position, and it comes back across. And here, obviously G0, they don't touch. And then um, if I if I look at all these sort of contiguously, you could see a big difference in the way that these transition from surface to surface to surface. So it is very important that you pay really close attention to all of the different types of analysis. It's not just one, it's not just the other. Some people ask, hey, what's the best one to use? There is no best one to use. All of them are the best one to use. If I do this, bring these back. Let me zoom way up on this guy. You can see tiny, 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 tiniest, tiniest little break. And you can actually see this comb comes over this way, this comb comes over that way, and they just pass each other up just slightly. I can go in there and fix this and tweak it and make it perfectly curved. G2, or I mean, even uh, if I put the effort into it, get it to a, a true G3 continuity. But that's for another video. But you can see how these continuities really play differently with the surfaces. And, and again, philosophically and theoretically, yeah, I have a G3 surface. This is G3, but there's no G0 going across that boundary. This is just to get people to think. I know they'll probably get a bunch of questions, private messages and stuff about that. But it's just, just, just to play with you a little bit. Um, so it's really important that when you analyze your surfaces, you make sure that you know what you're looking at. So this is where this, in theory, looks great, but you have to zoom up, you have to check it. If I do a surface continuity check between these two, um, let's see here, G1, let's do that. Gaussian, whoops, there we go. That one, that one. You can see I have a break in tangency, but in curvature, it's perfect at that end. Break in tangency, but in curvature, it's perfect. See, it comes up with um, 0. 0.00000 for curvature and, and 0. 0.5 for tangency. So even that, you can see that it's broken, okay? And then, um, obviously G3 is not going to be any good, but you, this is where you start getting into some odd theoretical stuff where, again, I'm, I'm just simply looking at my data. This shows tangency is broken, but curvature is fine. Okay, this goes back to this guy way over here, all right? This is G3 all the way. Let me do this. Let me go from this one to this edge. And if I look at Mathematically, right? G2, almost perfect. G1, almost perfect. Positional, way, way, way off. G3, we do this, turn these off. G3, look at that. Perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So this goes back to my whole, you have to use all sorts of different methods to analyze your surfaces to really, truly understand what's going on. Mathematically, these are perfectly going, perfect going across the center line. Mathematically, the other ones are G2 going across the center line. But visually, visually, it's obviously, this is obviously has a gap. Once I get to this one and I rotate this out and I, and I actually really take a look at what's going on with my highlight lines, you can see that there's something amiss. Um, these over here are obvious. So it's critical that you analyze your surfaces. And I'll probably beat these to death in other videos as well. So. Just, uh, just to give everybody an idea of what's going on with curvature, um, tangency, the analysis tools, how important it is to use different tools to verify your surfaces are good.